So in this problem, we're told, suppose the coefficient of kinetic friction between MA and the plane in figure is mu sub k equals 0.15, and that MA equals MB, which equals 2.7 kg. As MB moves down, determine the magnitude of the acceleration of MA and MB given theta equals 34 degrees. And then B, what is the smallest value of mu sub k that will keep the system from accelerating? So if you see right here, we have our incline. We have uh, two blocks, MB and MA. And so they're going to be connected by a pulley. And so they tell us that MB is going to move down and MA is going to move up. And so they give us some other information, such as the coefficient of kinetic friction, the masses of each of the box, and then they also tell us our incline. So I went ahead at the degree of the incline and I wrote that here. So whenever you're doing a problem like this, dealing with boxes and pulleys, uh, what we want to do is go ahead and do a free body diagram. So we're going to do a free body diagram for each of the boxes. So we're going to label this one and this one. So first thing you to understand is when you do a free body diagram, uh, you want to kind of label your axis. So keep in mind, when I refer to the x-axis in this video, I'm talking about everything along this line right here. So this right here is your x-axis. And when you do an incline like this, you like to label the incline as your x-axis. And the y-axis uh, is basically perpendicular to this line. So whatever is perpendicular to this line is along the y-axis. So you'll see why that matters later on, but just keep that in mind. So let's start with labeling MB. So we know it has the force of gravity, so F of G. And so you should know the force of gravity is... Uh, equal to mg. So in this case, for this block, it's equal to mb times g. And then we also know it has a tension force. We can call that f of t, keeping it up. So this is f of t. And then we're going to want to go ahead and label this other block. So this one's done. And then what are the forces acting on this one? So we know we have the normal force that's going to be acting along the y axis. So that's labeled. And then we're also going to want to label the force of friction. So keep in mind, it's traveling this way. And so the force of friction uh, always acts opposite to the way it travels. So it would be this way. So force of friction is going to act this way since it's traveling this way. We know that it also has the tension right here. So this is also F of T. These are going to be equal. So F of T is going to be pulling it up. And then the last force we have is gravity. So you should know gravity acts straight down. So it'll act straight down like this. And so this is going to be M A G. Keep in mind, I'm separating. They're basically the same, so you could just write M since M B equals M A. But just keep that in mind. And so when we do a free body diagram, you always want to label it along the axes. So based on your forces, this one's along the Y, so we don't have to put it into components. Same with F of T and uh, the force of friction. They're both along our axis, whether it's the X or Y. But the gravity force isn't, so we have to split it into its components along the axis. Now, the way we do that is by kind of just drawing a line like this. I like to do it like this, draw a triangle. And so this will be your X component. You can call it FG of X, and this could be FG of Y. So since it's along the Y and this one's along the X, and so you'll see what these values are, but we're just going to leave them like that for now. So now we've got all our forces labeled. So let's kind of talk about how we're actually going to solve this problem. So the way we solve it is by summing the forces along different directions. So you're gonna sum the forces, that's how you always solve these problems. But what we basically wanna do is, well, we're gonna start with summing the forces for this block, and then we're gonna move into this block. And the way we, the reason we're doing that is to get certain values, because notice what we're solving for. We're trying to find the acceleration. And so we're finding the acceleration of this block when we do it. So we're gonna need values from each of these in order to solve it. So. It's easier shown, so let's just take start by summing the forces uh, of this block. So I'm going to call this the Y. So this is the Y for this block, just straight up and down. So the sum of the forces in the Y are going to be equal to Z, uh, sorry, it's going to be equal to MA. And so keep in mind MA, this is MBA. And so since it's this block, so some of the forces equal MBA because F equals MA. So you just sum the forces like that, and then you just say MB. A equals, and then you sum the forces along this line. So you want to say F of T minus M B G. And so the reason this is negative is because this is going down while F of T is positive. We label upwards as positive. So F of T would be positive. And so what this tells us is that F of T is equal to M B A plus M B G. And so, uh, yeah. So now that you've got that, what you're going to want to do is now you're going to sum the forces in the Y on this block. So we did this block in order to solve for F of T. 
but now we're going to sum the forces in the y for this block now how do we do that so once again keep in mind for this one instead of it equal e being equal to maa which is what it is for right we said f equals ma and since we're dealing with block a we do maa keep in mind that we don't move in the y-axis right i said the y-axis was this right perpendicular to this incline so we only move along the x which means we're not moving at all in the y therefore a is zero so this would some of the force in the y just equals zero in this case okay cool so now we have uh, zero equals and then we sum the forces in the y so you only want to pick ones that are acting in the y so force of tension these don't count the only ones in the y are normal force and the y component of gravity so if it goes up we say it's positive fn minus fgy so fn equals fgy so now what i want to do is show you how we actually find fgy so the way we do that is look at this triangle here so i'm going to redraw it right here for us so trying to redraw the triangle there we go okay it's kind of like that imagine this is 90 degrees this is this triangle right here basically so let's label it with a certain thing so this angle right here you need to know is equal to this angle right here so these are the same so this is 34 degrees uh this side if on the triangle it cor correlates to the side so this is just f of g or mag whatever you want to call it this is fgy this is fgx so how do we find fgy so the way we do it is by doing trig so what you want to do is use the cosine function for y so i'll show you how it works so we take the cosine of the angle and you should know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so our adjacent side is fg of y and our hypotenuse is f of g so fgy over f of g keep in mind what f of g is though f of g just equals m a g in this case so m a g so if you multiply both sides they will cancel and you'll find fg of y equals m a m a g times the cos of 34. so keep in mind that's what the y is and now we know what f of n equals so that's the reason we did that to find uh and I'm just going to start writing M from now on. Since MA and MB are the same value, it's just easier to do it that way. So I'm just going to say M. So just keep in mind that's why I'm writing M now. So F of N equals MG cosine of 34. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to want to do is sum the forces in the X for this one. So sum the forces in the X for this block. Now let's go ahead and do that. So sum the forces for that. F equals MA. So it's just M times A. Keep in mind that uh, we're working on the x now. So any force in this direction. So we have ma equals. Now what we want to do is add up the forces in this one. So I'm going to say going to the right is positive, left is negative. So if we look at this, f of t is going to the left, so we'll call it negative. So minus f of t. And then what else is acting in the x? We have the force of friction here. And then the other one is just the x component of gravity. So we're going to say plus the force of friction and then it's going to be plus fg of x now what we want to do is actually write fg of x uh find what it is so fg of x so if we look at our triangle again here instead of using cos we're going to use sine so sine of an angle in this case 34 sine is opposite over hypotenuse so the opposite side is fgx and then over fg so Keep in mind what F, uh, F, right, this is just the force due to gravity, so it's mg. Multiplying both sides, you'll see it equals the sine of 34, or mg sine of 34. So now we have fg of x. So what we have here is ma equals minus f of t. We know what f of t is, so let's go ahead and write that in. It's right there, m. So I'm just going to start writing m. So ma plus mg. Um, and then we have the force of friction, so plus mu sub k times f sub n. That's what the force of friction is equal to. That's the formula. So let's write that down. We know what the normal force is, so we found mg cosine of 34. So let's write that in. Uh, I'm actually going to go back here, so let me go ahead and do that. So this is just 
U sub k times mg cos of 34 plus, and then keep in mind we have, uh, right, so we have fgx now, which is mg sine of 34. So let me make sure I have that right. So ma minus f of t, right, f of t is there, ma plus mg, and then force of friction u sub k times f sub n, f sub n is that, plus um, fg of x, so mg, yeah. Okay, so this is right. Uh, now what we want to do is simplify this. So if you notice, let me go like this. So ma equals minus ma minus mg plus mu sub k mg cos 34 plus mg. Let me zoom out a bit. mg sine of 34. So notice we have an m in each term, so these can all cancel. So you have acceleration is equal to minus acceleration minus g plus mu sub k times g. Let me write this a bit neater. Mu sub k g cos of 34 plus g sine of 34. So moving a to the other side, because that's what they're wanting us to solve for, right? They want us to say, what is the acceleration of the block? So you have 2a equals and then minus g plus mu sub k g cos of 34 plus g sine of 34. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is just go ahead and plug this in. So you would divide by 2 actually, so make sure you divide by 2. So we have minus 9.8 plus 0.15 because that's what mu sub k is times 9.8 cos of 34 plus uh, g, which is 9.8 sine of 34 divided by 2. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So minus 9.8 plus 0.15 times 9.8 cos of 34 plus 9.8 sine of 34 and then divide by 2. So when you go ahead and do that, okay, yeah, so when you do this, you're going to get a value of minus 1.55 meters per second squared. So keep in mind what the negative is indicating. It's just indicate that it travels to the left based on our diagram. So we obviously know it's going to be accelerating this way and this way. So uh, yeah, so really you can just say A equals 1.55 meters per second squared, or however you want to write it, just make sure you label your diagram correctly. So 1.55 meters per second squared or 1.6, however you want to round it. Uh, but yeah, so this is the answer to the first part. So this is the acceleration. And now let's go ahead and do the second part. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the second part now. So I went ahead and erased it so we have more room. But essentially in this part, what we're gonna be finding is the smallest value of mu sub k in order for this system to stop accelerating, right? So to keep it constant. So how do we do that? So when we say to stop it from accelerating, basically the sum of the forces when we solve this one, whether it's in the x or the y, are going to be equal to zero because we're saying a is zero, therefore the whole thing's zero. So when we solve this one, all we're going to do is basically set all those equal to zero and then we're going to solve for mu sub k. So basically repeat the same steps as last time, but do that. So let's start with this one. So some of the forces in the y here, so we're saying this is the y, equals zero as I said. So zero is equal to f of t minus m. So I'm just going to call it m instead, just like last time. So f t equals m g in this case. Okay, so we've got that. And so keep in mind, we're going to want to solve for this value. So we know m and we know g. So f of t equals 2.7 times 9.8. So let me plug that in. That is going to be 20... Yeah, 26.46 newtons. So it just makes it easier to plug it in now than later. So we know f of t now. And now we want to do it here. So we're going to sum the forces along the y. So remember, that's this right here. So sum the forces in the y. Once again, 0 because we're not accelerating. So 0 equals... We have the normal force, obviously, in the y. Uh, and then we have fg of y. 
So uh, we have F sub n. Keep in mind, if it's upwards, it's positive, as I said before. So minus, and then as you, you should recall that in the y, it's mg cos of theta. So if you don't remember that, just go back and look at the last, uh, last one. I showed how we derived uh, that. So mg cos of theta. Keep in mind, theta is 34 degrees. So we've got that. And so this tells us F sub n equals mg cos of 34. And so we can go ahead and plug this in too. So m is going to be 2.7 times 9.8 times the cos of 34. So 2.7 times 9.8 times the cos of 34 yeah so 21.9936 we'll say newtons okay cool so we've got those and now we're going to sum the forces in the x so let me do it over actually i'll do it over here so some of the some of the forces in the x equals zero and so sorry about that uh so if we look in the x, we have the tension force right here. We have the force of friction, and the other one in the x is fg of x. So zero equals q minus zero, once again, because a is zero. This is ma, but it's zero. So zero equals, uh, once again, I'm going to say to the left is negative. So minus f of t, minus f of t, uh, and then we have plus the force of friction and then plus fg of x. And so if you don't remember, fg of x is mg sine of theta. So theta is 34. Okay, cool. So what we want to do is get force of friction by itself. So let's say force of friction equals moving these to the other side, f of t minus mg sine of 34. Uh, so force of friction is mu sub k times f sub n. Right, and so we're solving for mu sub k, so we want to get this force of friction by itself. That's the reason we did that. So f of t we found was, what was that? f of t was 26, uh, let's actually find, yeah, so 26.46, yeah. And then minus, let me calculate this, what this is. So keep in mind, it's just m, so 2.7 times 9.8 times the sine of 34. So it's 14.796. So you'll find mu sub k uh, times f sub n equals, now let me plug that in, 26.46 minus that value, 11.664, about. And then divide by the normal force to get our mu sub k. So. 11.664 divided by f sub n, which we found in the last problem. So a good way to check is generally they'll give you a value that's uh, less than one. Almost all values are, in, unless it's an extreme circumstance. But a good way to know if you're right is if you're about in between 0 and 1. So 11.664 divided by 21.936 should give you point. 5317. So... We're just about 0.53 and yeah so you're gonna find mu sub k equals 0.53 so this is gonna be your answer to the second part so what is the uh, smallest value mu sub k to keep it from accelerating so if they say you keep from accelerating just know that m a is zero so and then just solve it normally uh, but yeah so this was your answer to the second part and then you saw the answer to the first part before so if you need that again just go back and uh, yeah so this is your answer for the second one, and hopefully you found this useful.